Hey guys, welcome to the seventh video of the e-commerce with Golang project backend series. So uh, in this video, we'll complete, uh, we'll quickly finish our sign up function. Uh, there were only a couple of things remaining, which uh, are to do with basically creating that user object, and then we'll work on our login function. So let's get started quickly. Password will be hash password. Whenever you want to store your password in the database, you also always want to. Uh, hash it. So we're creating the user object with all these uh, values like password and all, and then we'll store that in our database, right? That's what we're going to do in the last, the final uh, parts of this function. So uh, this is how you want to hash the password. You want to say user.password is what I want to send to the hash password function, which I'll create, uh, which is here basically. I'll create uh, that function soon. And in the hash password function, we'll just take the password and we'll hash it. And <clears throat> now in the user object, uh, you want to store the password that comes after hashing the password. Okay. Awesome. Then you want to, uh, you want these type of fields. Let me show you the created at updated at all those timestamp fields is what you want. Quick. Uh, so let's work on those. So you'll have user dot created underscore at and user dot updated underscore at then you'll have your user dot ID right user dot ID is what you want and um, I'll have then we'll work we'll work with the tokens and refresh tokens in a while so first let's let's do this so it's a time dot parse and time dot RFC um, 33 nine which is basically we want to create the right timestamp and we want to put the timestamp which is right now so we'll say time dot now and what format do you want to put it in which is time dot rfc 39 makes sense now all what i want you to do is you i just want you to copy and paste this because this is where people can make mistakes with the timestamp user.id is uh, primitive dot new object id Okay, and user dot user underscore ID will be user dot ID dot the hex value of it basically, where H is capital. Okay, now you want to work with the token and refresh token. So you want to say user dot dot token and user dot refresh underscore token and you also want to have the cart so it's a user dot user cart his address details address underscore details and his order status so order underscore status sorry that's about it <coughs> sorry <coughs> token comma refresh uh, sorry refresh token will be equal to generate dot token generator okay so this is your token gen dot go file which will have this function token generator and you want to pass your user dot email there so this will have your user dot email and it will have comma user dot first name now to create the token you can pass any number of fields or any fields that you want uh, that you think should be part of the token and in my case I'm just using uh, first name and last name and user dot user display these are fields that I am choosing with uh, <clears throat> the token now is going to be this token that you've just gotten back from token generator function basically returns token and refresh token and user the token is the more specific token inside the user struct or the user object <coughs> that we want to update now in our database insert in our database now uh, 
So the user token is equal to ampersand token and the refresh token is equal to the user dot refresh token is equal to ampersand uh, refresh token. Make sense? User cut will basically be equal to uh, models dot product user and our address details since they're all slices will be equal to models dot address comma zero because there will be multiple products in the user and multiple addresses that a user can have so this is why we have uh, slices we're using slices and not just one particular value order status is equal to models dot order comma zero and now you want to uh, go ahead and insert this in the user collection because since we just created the user object complete user object with all these values created add updated at id user id token refresh token user card and um, address details and order status <clears throat> now we want to insert this in a database so how do you do that you take user collection dot insert one and you pass the seat context you pass the user object that you just created by you know updating all these values and you want to um, you know, call this function and you want to capture this uh, in a blank character in the sense you don't actually want to use uh, the value that gets inserted but you want all but you at least want to handle the insert error right whenever you're working with the database you want to handle the errors that might um, happen when working with the database function so if insert error is not equal to nil what you want to do you want to say c.json and http dot status internal server error comma gen dot h error the user did not get created okay and you want to return from this function now we write defer cancel and if everything went well you want to say c.json http dot status created comma successfully signed in awesome cool now comes your um, login function since we have some time i'll finish the login function as well right now itself <clears throat> Just like your signup function, this is going to return a function which uh, takes gen.context and <clears throat> uh, just like your signup function, you want to start with context dot with timeout and you want to pass context uh, dot background comma 100 seconds time dot second. All right. And you want to capture that in a variable called context. Okay. And just like we did with the signup function, we want to create a variable called user, which will be uh, just of type models.user. By models, I mean our models file, our models package, and user, I mean the struct user. Okay that's our user variable and we're going to say bind json with so whatever that you receive from um, you know uh, the the json values that you receive you want to capture that in the user which is of type struct but uh, <clears throat> we don't have to use uh, marshalling and marshalling we can just use c which is gen context and it does all of that for us and you want to capture the error if it exists so if error is equal to c dot <coughs> by json and ampersand user error is not equal to nil <coughs> you want to say c dot json http dot status uh, bad request comma gen dot h error and error 
and then you want to return from this function. All right. Now we want to check if that user even exists in our uh, database. So you'll say user collection dot find one, and you'll pass context and json dot m, and you'll pass the email of the user. So you'll say user dot email, and then you'll decode it, decode the user. And this is the found user. So if you found the user, obviously uh, he exists in your database and only then it makes sense to log that user in and you will check for the error as well. Just go cancel. And if error is not equal to nil, that means you got some error while performing this function. So, uh, database functions, you know, wherever there's a database function, you ideally want to check for error. <coughs> so if error not equal to nil, c dot json http dot status internal server error and the error is login or password is incorrect. We'll say login password incorrect and you wanna return and then uh, you want to verify the password. So verify password. You want to pass the user dot password there, and the user that you just found his password also you want to pass. So you the found user which you just found here the found user. You uh, send his password and the password that the user has sent you to verify. And then once it's verified, then you log that user in. Then you give him the tokens, right? So we say password is valid, comma message that you want to show. And that's because verify password, the function returns either like true false and then it runs a string, right? Uh, so which is password valid and the string, which is the message. And <clears throat> before cancel. Now you want to check if the password is valid or not. So if password is not Valid. Right. Password is not valid. Then in that case, you want to say c dot json http dot status internal server error comma gen dot page error and message. Fmp dot print ln message and you want to return from this function. <clears throat> but, so this all this happens when the password is not valid. But if the password is valid, uh, you ran the verify password function, you checked the user that exists in the database with the, uh, with the password of the user that's in the database uh, with this user and the password matches, uh, then what you want to do is you want to generate the token for this user because everything is perfect, right? You have no reason to stop this user. So you'll use the generate.token generator package, uh, the function uh, we'll create in this file token gen.go and the token comma refresh, refresh, sorry, refresh token comma blank character and generate.token generator. Now to use the token generator uh, function right you can pass any variables that you want but in my case I'll, I'll pass the email of the found user I'm going to pass the first name so it's found user not founder user found user dot first underscore name and I'll pass the found user dot last underscore name and found user dot user underscore id. So I'm passing his email, first name, last name, and the id. So you'll say cancel and uh, in your generate package itself, you'll have a function called update all tokens so that all the tokens get updated 
the refresh token. This needs to happen every single time the user logs in, right? So we'll say found user dot user and display. Awesome. At the end of the function, which is this login function, you want to return HTTP dot status found comma the found user is what's what you want to return. Awesome. So our sign up function, login function are both complete, and that's a huge achievement. So you have, if you are, uh, if you've been following till this long, that's pretty good. Uh, we've reached quite far. Do subscribe to this channel because uh, you'll come to know whenever the next video of the series comes out, which will be either tomorrow or day after, whenever. And uh, there are hundreds of uh, videos, uh, GoLang videos on this channel. So if you subscribe, you can learn a lot. Uh, and you know, I, I hope you learn. And if you have any issues, you can always put them in the comments below. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.